Mysterial. I hope you can make better use of your time than that. Perhaps you should ask Captain Wickham to teach you some of the arts of peace. Conversation, for example. Major Sharp, I have more news for you. What is it, ma'am? Don't you dance, Major Sharp? No. What is your news? You should learn. I'm sure. What's her name? Lucille likes to dance now and then, don't you think? Please, tell me. Rossendale is here. Oh, not here. Nearby. Parfit says he's been left in a state. Is he there now? Yes. And his mistress, Mrs. Sharp, as was. Jane. Mum, where is this? Stuff, Parfit. I'll wager he'd not try it against a soldier. Wouldn't he, Percy? Why, George Wickham will see any man off. Yeah. Even Major Shaw. Ah, even Shaw. Why not? Richard? Where are you? Sir, I am not one for. You ain't afraid of young George, are you, Richard? No, sir. Then come on, man. Teach the young Sprig a lesson. He's a fine swordsman. He needs no lessons from me, sir. Then you are afraid, sir. In my hands, a sword isn't pretty, ma'am. It kills. We're not asking you to kill anyone, sir. Oh, try me, Major Sharp. You wouldn't even get a touch. <laughs> come, Major. Yes, come on. Why not? Very well. <laughs> Calavera, sir. Dancing. Dancing and flickering. That's where. Very fine, sir. Very fine. Silly old fart. Did you have a good evening? Rossendale. He has an estate around here. Find it. You think that's a good idea? Said find it. should not stay in a place like this. Nor you, Patrick. It is godless, full of foul drink and blasphemy. Oh, you filthy bastard! Jenny, please. Listen, I've tried several times to leave Miss Bunting, but Major Sharp insists on buying more drink. Then shame on you, Richard. 
I know that Widow Bevan has lodgings. You must move there, both of you, tonight. Sally, did you come to tell me something? For Lone Hope went through the breach at Badehoff. We walked on nothing but the dead. They were so thick on the ground. Do you saw it, Red Reedy, that, Sally? As soon as I could. The new estate, you know. Oh, yes. Uh, George, meet George. George Wickham. Boss me over for me till your fella came up. Shut up, you mean? That's him. Not quite the fighter you made him out to be. George got the better of him last night. Ran him ragged. You fought sharp. And you beat him. Easy, sir. Brain, not brawn. Stop bragging, George. Tain't attractive. Go in, Russendale, and tell me all about this estate you charmed out of your aunt Tabby. The house has been somewhat neglected, but it has a pleasant aspect, and the rooms are comfortable. Houses are easy. If you don't like them, you knock them down. How about the land? You've got plenty of farms paying you rent, I hope. In fact, no. No, much of the land is rough moor, but it has promise, particularly for the sort of industry I see around here. Industry? Is that what you want? I'm surprised a young gentleman like yourself would want to dirty his hands in industry. Others have, Willoughby. Why shouldn't I? Mills don't grow on trees, you know. They get built. They get built by hard cash and hard work. I believe the land gives me more than adequate collateral, sir. See all this, Lord Rossendale? My library. Latin, Greek, Homer, Tacitus, the lot. You think I built this up book by book? Ex libris Willoughby Parfit, did I, L. I bought it off a broke baronet. Same with my mills. My first mill took five years to build and ten years to make a profit. I thought I'd be supping with worms before I get rich. So I went out and I bought other people's mills. Aye. And I bought them even if they didn't want to sell. Then why did they sell? Oh, <laughs> there are ways. And once I've got them, I run them better. Harder. I make the workers work, and if they grumble, well, there's always George here, or your man, Sharp, to keep things in order. Would you like a slice of that pie, Lord Rossendale? I'm happy to be part of any enterprise that shows a quick profit. You need a cash, eh? <laughs> That's the trouble with London. I need cash to pay Sharp off. Pay him off? What for? He abused his wife, neglected and beat her. She could stand no more, and she ran away. I took pity on her. Pity, eh? <laughs> yes, pity. He threatened her and me, pretending an affection for her he has never shown. He demanded money for his silence. I obtained him this commission, yet he still wants more. Glad to be of service, Rossendale. How much cash does Sharp want? Ten thousand pounds. This Mrs. Sharp must be quite something. She is. So, you sent Sharp to me to get rid of him, but your Aunt Tabby goes and dies nearby. That's damned inconvenient, isn't it? The coincidence had not struck me, sir. Of course it hadn't. Of course it hadn't. Well, John, Mrs. Sharp, what is she like, eh? 